In this video, we're gonna take a look at acrylic painting and we're gonna do a small little still life of an apple. Let's start by taking a look at our palette. Of course, this is a photograph of the finished palette, but let's talk about the colors here. I'm gonna be using titanium white, Payne's gray, burnt umber, raw umber, alizarin crimson, cadmium red hue, burnt sienna, Prussian blue, cadmium yellow light, and Indian yellow. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix raw umber and titanium white and put a nice ground coating on the surface. Just a nice even color. And then I'm gonna sketch out the outlines of the apple. And I've already done so here. Now what we wanna do is create an underpainting. And this underpainting is gonna be focused on the values that we see in the photo reference. So I'm gonna use a bit of burnt umber and Payne's gray and it's going to create a more natural looking black. Of course, my mixture is going to have a little bit more of the burnt umber in it, so it'll appear a little bit brown. And we're only going to concentrate in the areas of darkest shadow that we see initially. And this is going to be in the area of cast shadow right behind the apple and in some of the areas that are in that little indention that happens at the top of the apple. Now, we're creating an underpainting here, so we're not worried about the local color or the color that's actually perceived on the apple. Instead, we're only worried about the values and the value range in our photo reference. So there are gonna be some areas where we thin out our mixture a bit with some water and apply it to the surface to create some of the mint tones and lighter values that we actually see here. So you can see I'm doing that in, in this case here, adding some of those mid tones and lighter values with thinned out versions of that mixture of burnt umber and Payne's gray. All right, now the top portion of our composition has a dark background where the edge of the table exists. Now in the photo reference, that edge is a little bit higher up on the picture plane. I'm gonna bring it down just a bit to make the composition a bit more interesting. Now our tonal ground that we created is pretty much a mid-tone. So we've got to address some of the lighter values and the only way we can do that is by adding a bit of white. So most of these values are gonna exist on the surface of the table. So we're gonna add white to our mixture of raw umber and titanium white. And we're just gonna create some loose brush strokes, basically defining the edge of the apple and the edge of the table. And I'm gonna allow these marks to get a little bit lighter as it gets closer to the viewer. So I'll add just a touch more of the titanium white as I get closer. Now we're ready to start adding some of the local color. So I'm gonna start mixing up some of these yellow greens that I see here on the apple. I'm gonna start initially with cadmium yellow light. I'll mix just a bit of Indian yellow hue in there. And to make it more of a green, I'm gonna use Prussian blue. Now you can see when I'm mixing this, how strong that Prussian blue is. It just basically takes over. I'm also gonna add just a bit of white and a bit more of the Indian yellow hue to tone it down to make that color a bit more muted. Now we're ready to start applying our first layer of local color. Now we're gonna be applying a lot of layers here and it's those layering of colors that's eventually gonna reveal the, the apple here. It's gonna make the apple feel a bit more realistic. So I'm gonna apply with a dry brush basically. I'm not gonna use a lot of water. I want the color to be transparent so that the underpainting that we created shows through. And the values that we apply to the apple in the underpainting will affect the value of the color that we put on top. Now I'm gonna add just a bit of titanium white and a bit more cadmium yellow light to the mixture to create just a lighter version of that green. Now you'll notice that I'm trying to make the brush strokes following the cross contours of the apple. These brush strokes are important because they give the viewer a bit of information about the form of the apple. So I'm not making brush strokes that go horizontally or diagonally. Instead, I'm trying to follow the form of the apple as I scrub these applications in. Now, I'm just applying various mixtures of those colors that we originally mixed. Indian yellow, cadmium yellow light, and Prussian blue. I'm adding white in some circumstances, but basically it's the same mixture of colors. Just creating different, different mixtures of those three colors is gonna create a variety of different colors on the surface, obviously, and we want to have those different varieties. Now, speaking of variety, I'm gonna add just a bit of burnt sienna here to our mixture, just again, to create a bit more variety in that yellow green and make it feel a bit more natural. 
And of course, I'll pull down just a bit of Prussian blue into the mixture as well. And that's going to give us a nice muted color that is going to feel a bit more natural, more like the colors that you might find on the side of an apple. And here again, I'm going to apply the color, basically scrubbing the color into the surface, following the cross contours of the apple. I'm not going to apply it everywhere either. I'm going to allow some of that green that we originally put on to show through. Now, we're not finished with the yellow-green areas, but we're going to go ahead and start addressing some of the areas of red. We'll start with a mixture of alizarin crimson and cadmium red hue. And we're going to go right over the top of the underpainting that we created, just like we did for the yellow-greens. And here again, I'm going to try to scrub the color into the surface following the cross contours. And I might embellish in a couple of areas. In other words, I might pull a little bit of the red down into areas that might not actually exist on the photo reference, just because I want to accentuate that relationship between the yellow greens and the red. All right, now we're ready to go a little bit darker with some of the darker values that exist. So to create this color, I've just mixed a bit of Payne's Gray and Burnt Umber with our alizarin crimson and cadmium red hue mixture just to create a darker value. I'm not going to use black. I found that Payne's Gray and Burnt Umber mix to create a more natural looking black, and sometimes black can make things look flat. So I prefer to mix my own black. Now that we've got some of the darker areas in place in the red areas, we can go ahead and start to push some of the mid-tones and lighter values. Again, I'm going to stick with the same colors. I'm going to be using a mixture of cadmium red hue and alizarin crimson, and occasionally I'll add a bit of titanium white or a bit of burnt umber and Payne's gray to make the color a little bit darker. But basically, we're going to stick with these same colors for the moment. So there's a little bit of a highlight happening here on the left side. Of course, the light source is originating from the left side. So a little bit more white is added. And there's some, some light that's bouncing up on the bottom portion of the apple there. So the bottom portion of the apple on the left side is a bit lighter. And of course, on those ridges that pop up, it's going to be a little bit lighter in value as well. So I'm just going to continue working these relationships between dark and light. With each additional layer of color, I can work those relationships. I can add a bit more detail, a bit more interest, and most importantly, I'm adding a bit more depth to the color. Now, of course, there's little areas of inconsistencies and imperfections that happen on the apple. So we can accentuate these by creating different relationships of value. So we'll have areas that are a little bit darker in value and areas that are a little bit lighter, and they'll translate as being those small imperfections that we see on the apple. All right, now that we've got our initial applications of red in place, we'll go back and push the yellow-green areas. Here again, I'm using the same colors, Indian yellow, cadmium yellow light, Prussian blue, and a bit of white added in as well. With each layer of color that is added to the apple, we're going to be very patient and uh, just scrub that color into the surface. So we're going to slowly adjust the colors as we add them and all of the different layers that we add. Partial bits of each layer will still show through, which is really going to create some depth in the color. All right, now let's go ahead and apply some lighter values in the area of highlight that are, that's happening on the left side of the apple here. Again, I'm going to use a mixture of cadmium yellow light, uh, just a touch of yellow, Indian yellow in this mixture and a lot of titanium white here. This area is not completely white. It's really a, a super light yellow. Now I'm going to go back and add a little bit of the titanium white. Now I'm doing this while the surface is still wet and I'm just going to use the tip of my finger to kind of blend that in a little bit. I don't want it to be white. I want it to be a light, light yellow. And we'll go ahead and add a bit of color to the stem here. This is a mixture of Payne's Gray and Burnt Umber. And then on the left side of the stem, which is closer to the light source, we're going to use that lighter green mixture of cadmium yellow light, Prussian blue, and Indian yellow. 
Now we're ready to add some more imperfections on the side of the apple. And really it's these imperfections that are gonna help make the apple look a bit more realistic. So I'm gonna use a darker version of the green mixture that we used for the bulk of the apple. So that's cadmium yellow light, a bit of Prussian blue, and just a touch of burnt umber here. In the areas where the apple is red, of course some of the imperfections are lighter in value. So I'm gonna use that light mixture of cadmium yellow light, just a touch of Indian yellow and titanium white. At this point in the painting, I feel like the yellow green area is still just a touch too green. So I'm gonna warm things up a little bit with some more yellow mixed in to our yellow green. So I'm gonna use a little bit more cadmium yellow light, just a touch of Indian yellow with our Prussian blue to create more of a yellow green. And then I'm gonna go over a few areas here in the yellow green section. Now clearly you can still see some of the colors that we've already applied underneath this application. But remember, this is what we're after. We're trying to build up layers of color so that the ultimate color that's perceived by the viewer is a bit more realistic and has a good level of depth to it. Now I don't want to lose that green contrast um, that we had before with the, with the red on the apple. So I'm going to go back again with a lighter mixture of that yellow green with a bit more of the Prussian blue in it just to create a couple areas of accent. Now let's go ahead and lighten up some of the uh, areas of the apple that are red and the lighter values aren't quite right. So I'm going to use alizarin crimson, uh, a bit of cadmium red hue, and a bit of titanium white and I'm gonna use a little bit more of the cadmium red hue in the mixture, and that's gonna create more of an orangey kind of red, for lack of a better word. And this is gonna be a little bit of a closer match to what's being viewed in the photo reference. It's also gonna create a nice transition area between the red areas on the apple and then the yellow green areas on the apple as well. While these types of apples do have areas of hard contrast between the red areas and the yellow green areas, they also have areas of transition where it's almost as if the red areas fade into the areas of yellow green. So that warmer red is gonna help create those transition areas. Now I'm gonna just gonna go back and forth here with the yellow green and the red to create uh, a little bit more interest in the shapes that are happening on the upper portion of the apple. I also might take some of that yellow green here and just make a few bold marks on the right side to perhaps indicate a bit of reflected light that's hitting the right side of the apple. And again, I'll continue to work the red areas as well, creating a bit of transition. And it may seem like I'm going back and forth between colors, and that's because I am. Um, at this stage in the painting, I'm just trying to find bits of information in the photo reference and then going right to my palette, mixing up a quick version of that color and then putting that color down real quickly. And even though it may seem like I'm mixing a bunch of different colors, I'm still using that same core group of colors to mix. For the yellow green areas, it's still Indian yellow, cadmium yellow light, and Prussian blue with just a bit of white mixed in. And in the areas of red, it's still that alizarin crimson, the cadmium red hue, and uh, just a bit of white or just a bit of burnt umber if I need a darker value. So it's the same colors that I'm using, just with different quantities of each color mixed in. And you can be pretty loose with this because if you put a color down that doesn't seem quite right, you can always go back over the top of it. That's one of the great things about acrylic paint. It's really easy to fix mistakes in a short period of time. Unlike with oil paint, you know, the paint stays wet for a long period of time. So you kind of have to slowly adjust the colors. And if you're not careful with uh, oil paint and you put the wrong color on the surface, you could create some muddied areas. With acrylics, it's really not going to be the case. Of course, you could create some muddy colors, but you can always go over them if they don't appear quite right. All right, at this point, we're going to put some more imperfections on the app. What I know you're thinking, well, you already put imperfections on before, and I did, but we covered those up for the most part. You could still see hints of them here and there through the semi-transparent applications, but we're just going to add a few more here to uh, make things feel a bit more realistic. And now we're going to go ahead and 
address the cast shadow that's happening behind the apple. And the first thing I'm going to do is just apply a, a little bit of a heavier application of a mixture of paints, gray and burnt umber. And then I'm going to allow a bit more water in the mixture and just pull that color over the top of the lighter area around it. Now I want to create a transition zone and I don't want the shadow to be quite so dark. So I'm going to go over the top of that shadow just very loosely with that mixture of raw umber and titanium white. And I'm going to go ahead and darken up that background again with a mixture of Payne's Gray and Burnt Umber make things just a bit darker. And then the last thing I'm going to do here is just push that yellow area right in that yellow green part of the apple just one more time. Again, with a few more cross contour strokes there with the brush. So that's a quick look at painting with acrylics here. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it helped you out. If you enjoyed this video and you're ready to learn more about drawing and painting, why not check out our comprehensive membership program at thevirtualinstructor.com, which includes great video courses, weekly live instruction, downloadable eBooks, and even lesson plans for teachers. Just click on the button in the corner to learn more now. You can also get three free course modules from our program. One from the Secrets to Drawing, one from Pastel Landscape Mastery, and a third from the Oil Painting Master Series. Each module includes a video and an ebook. To learn more about how you can get your free course modules, again, just click on the button in the corner. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please consider subscribing to the channel so you can get access to all of the new videos as we publish them. Thank you so much for watching and I wish you the best of luck in your artistic journey.